going on, guys? It's Brian Jack with some men's comics. We are back with a new week. So, of course, we got this comic book market trends for you. That's right. This is the three up, three down, where we're going to cover three up market trends and three down market trends in the comic book community. How's your week going so far, Jack? That's so far so good, Brian. You know, a lot to be looking forward to, a lot to be thankful for going on in the comics market. New comics are starting to get back in the swing, and that is exciting. A lot of changes, and the market, man, the market is healthy, Brian. Yeah, especially when it's zeroed in on individuals, and we're going to start with that right now with that first upward trend. And we would be remiss if we didn't talk about Miles Morales. I'm telling you, if it's got that name on the front of a comic book, it is selling right now. Yeah, we are seeing spikes for everything. I mean, what's hot with Miles Morales, Brian? What's not hot? You're talking about variants, incentives, blowing up to multiple hundreds of dollars right now. You're talking about the first appearance hitting $500. Free for comic book day issues going crazy. It's the comic fest. The comic fest free comic issues going for like 20 something yeah. bucks yeah the halloween fest or whatever yeah yeah it, 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 again it's crazy because a lot of shops probably are sitting with that in their store still to this day um and, and that book's blowing up we're seeing we just talked about it with our top 10 but that all new spider-man the, the the first miles morales kind of like solo series Issues number one and two are blowing up on the secondary market with Miles meeting Peter Parker. We know Tim Vogue just talked about that on the Bullman's Comics and Friends podcast that we just aired yesterday. Um, we also have all of these like Spider-Gwen crossovers. People are really, really, really bullish on the idea of Miles and Gwen in their love story. So the issue where they kiss for the first time is going for like $60. With that kiss cover, it's insane what's going on in the market right now. But I can't talk any negativity about it. We've said for a long time, Miles Morales was this guy. It's amazing that seemingly overnight, the market as a whole finally said, you know what? Yeah, he is that guy. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with what's going on in the country. And I think that it's, 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 we're at a point now where uh, people are, are ready for this, really, really ready for this. And, and, I think it's a great thing, and we've already seen it play out in Into the Spider-Verse and animated. I think this is only going to go further and further. And we've talked about Miles, but Brian, I got a feeling we're going to have Miles right back here again at, at some point in the near future. Yeah, I think you're definitely, it's, gonna, it's, an, it's up. I think you might see a slight drop in it. But for the time being, if I'm buying comics, I'm not touching Miles Morales because it's too hot. I'm going to go for those other tangible characters. You've heard the rumors talked about it before. I'm talking like Silk. Even spider Gwen's still obtainable, although it's starting to pick up again as well. But while Miles is soaring, and then you start buying stuff that other people haven't bought up yet. Absolutely. But I would caution people not to expect some market correction. I, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think we're going to – we may see Miles dip in price a bit from the insanity of the moment. But I don't think you're going to see some major, major, major downswing because I think this is really just the market catching up to what we've already known to be the possibility. I agree. I disagree on some of it because the way some of these books are taken off, I think they are artificially inflated right now. I think that's where you can see the market correction. But those those keys and the, the well-known stories, yeah, definitely, I think they're going to retain their value. Well, sure, especially if you're talking about previews 95. There's definitely some inflation going on. Moving over to the next one, the up portion this week. We are talking about a person. We're not talking about a character. We are talking about an actor. We're talking about the man himself. We are talking about Keanu Reeves. Yeah, this is my head scratcher pick. I expect people to sit there and go, what? But Keanu Reeves, it, I really think people are not noticing that his kind of beloved state within the comics market. Um, we talk a lot about licensed properties and we talk about the fact that a lot of times, a lot of licensed properties, a lot of comics that are based upon movies, which was all the rage in the 80s and 90s, they don't tend to take off because people don't associate that character with comics. Keanu was starting to get associated with comics, Brian. Bill and Ted, uh, the first appearance, is starting to really blow up on the secondary market um, post, uh, you know, trailer hitting for uh, Bill and Ted 3, which has a lot of people excited. If you haven't seen the trailer, the movie looks like a lot of fun. So it, we're starting to see prices go there. Keanu made a lot of news with his endorsement of the Dark Horse comics book, Bang, um, where he... Uh, you know, he had like a cover blurb, you know, supporting Matt Kent's, uh, you know, spy assassin type thriller. Um, and then 
you got to look at the John Wick series. The John Wick series, you know, that's not, you're not talking about a major company producing that, that series. And it really hit with, in, with not just readers, but secondary market people. That was a kind of a surprise winner of like 2019, 2020. Um, and because of that, I think all of these things, I'm really noticing that, that Keanu has a comic following. And I think it's something to pay attention to because we've heard nothing but reports that he wants to get more and more involved with this business. So as that happens, whether or not he plays a character in the MCU or he gets further involved in the publishing side, I think it's something to pay attention to and be on the lookout for. Yeah, and it was also just announced today that what he's auctioning off a 15-minute Zoom call for a, ch a children's charity. So yes, uh, definitely hot. I mean, between John Wick and everything you said right now, he had one heck of a rebound, especially with his career. Absolutely. Then the last one we're talking about for the three-up portion this week is V for Vendetta. I think this is one title that's gotten some popularity, especially with the social climate and the political climate that's going on, even though we don't, we don't talk too much about politics on this channel, but no doubt, I think that's having an effect on this title. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a policy. We, we, we try to stay away from politics um, and, and in turn, some of the kind of social unrest that's going on because we want to provide a safe haven for people to come here and just have fun and talk about comics. Um, and so that's kind of our goal. But sometimes we don't have a choice because of the topics and how they pertain to comics, how we talked about Miles Morales. I do agree with you that this is a lot of that. I also think that there's a company, Brian, that has a major effect on the fact that V for Vendetta number one is selling for higher than normal prices. V for Vendetta number one in a 9.8 is selling for much higher than normal prices. And the especially Warrior number one, the real first appearance of V for Vendetta, has seen incredible spikes. I think that's Netflix. Netflix has done an interesting job of finding these older movies that they think apply to the times. So when things are going on, they take V for Vendetta and they throw it in a very prime position on your Netflix app where you see it. I think a lot of people are watching V for Vendetta right now who maybe never saw the movie. And that is causing them to then get interested in the comic books. I want to talk about it because I wonder if it's a trend that we need to pay attention to going forward. We tend to think it with the spec cycle, when a movie comes out, right? It's, once it's out, the books are dead, right? All books related to that movie are dead. But I think this especially applies to independent comics, not so much big two, even though I know that V for Vendetta is a DC book. It's very much an independent creator-owned style book. Um, I, I wonder if some of these films that maybe don't hit the way we hope will then get second life on a streaming service. And I think what V for Vendetta has proven is that a, a movie that's not new by any stretch of the imagination can cause books on the secondary market to sell. Because it's just undoubtable, if you go do any sort of research, that you are going to see an increased interest in V for Vendetta over where that, where that property and that character and that, and that book, and, and even especially Warrior Number 1, which is already a tough-to-find book, um, the, the interest has definitely, definitely gone up. And I just cannot believe that that is a coincidence from the fact that if I open up my Netflix app, one of the very first entries I'm going to see over the last week has been V for Vendetta. I see. Nailed it. <laughs> My kids love watching that show, so it's always showing up. Mine too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a three up for this week. Again, let us know in the comments. What do you guys think's hot? What do you think's cold? What do you think about the ones we have up here for that three up portion? Let us know in the comments, and we'll be sure to feature those in next week's video. But with that being said, we're going to shift right now over into the downward portion. And what's down right now? We are talking DC incentive variance. Yeah, now again, this is, I could say DC in general, to be honest with you. Um, but it's very hard for me to put DC into the, the, the down column because they are penetrating right now for new comic book day. Certainly the punchline stuff, certainly the Tinian Batman stuff, certainly the Gold Lantern and uh, Legion of Superhero stuff got everyone's attention over the last few weeks. But what we've noticed is the increase in, in incentive variants being now solicited. Batman is doing it through 100. Um, now they're doing Legion of Superheroes, who's starting with issue seven. Um, we're still seeing late printings with same cover art. Um, in my opinion, the biggest egregious thing DC has done right now is change new comic book day till Tuesday. Um, excuse my language, but just f***ing up a beautiful... Uh, situation where we had one day 
just dedicated to comics and now you're trying to make two. Um, I, it really, really, I think that the company doesn't have a lot of direction right now. And I wonder if following the, the release of Dan Didio, if there was maybe a power vacuum, because it just seems like so much of what has gone on and these incentive variants are indicative of that. Well, and the thing is, you're talking down and you're talking modern right now releases. I think DC incentives in general right now are down. You can find a lot of those older, especially the new 52, a lot of those ratio incentive variants well below that ratio price you were just talking about the other day. You can find those one and two hundreds. Yeah, we just talked about Calvin Ellis. Right, we just talked about that Action Comics number nine. Last sale, 40 bucks on a one and two hundred. That's a ghost. Yep. So... No doubt there's, there's some popularity behind some of those characters, but I think as a as general consensus, DC incentives are down. But keeping with DC, the next one we're going with the downward trend right now is Batwoman. I think that's for two reasons, especially with the CW right now. And what else do you have for us, Jack? Batwoman Beyond. Batwoman Beyond is starting to drop in value and starting to drop in value not just in dollars, but in attention. I mean, that's just real. Like, there's still good money being paid for Batwoman Beyond, but... I mean, you're looking at a probably 25 to 33% drop from prices just a couple months ago. Um, this is exactly what Brian and I said would happen with that character uh, because, yeah, cool character, great addition to the Batman Beyond mythos, but it's not like Batman Beyond is a series that's doing huge numbers. It's not like Batman Beyond is driving. I think a lot of the attention for that was just first appearance based. And my whole argument was, why would you pay more for Batwoman Beyond than you'd pay for Batwoman? Um, who is still an undervalued uh, uh, character, or so she was, up until the point that Ruby Rose decided to pull the plug. I mean, she Ruby Rose is the perfect Batwoman. Uh, you know, Batwoman was had some issues with that show, but she was great casting, and there was a lot of potential. Um, apparently, she did not like the physical aspect of the job. She got hurt a couple times. Um, she just didn't want to continue it really really messes things up when you're talking about a main character leaving after one season so now we're going to replace her with a apparently a new organic character for the tv show in my mind totally turns me off to the tv show i have no interest in it if it's no longer any sort of canon with comics type thing um and that's unfortunate so i really think that over the next uh over the next year or so you're going to see batwoman prices drop across the board i think whether we're talking batwoman or batwoman beyond i think it's there's going to have to be a resetting of this character because so much momentum behind her, but uh, we've seen a lot in the last month that have just derailed that. Yeah, so they're not recasting, right? That's a new character. Are they going to rename the show instead of Batwoman, or is it going to be like Claw from Inspector Gadget, where you only see like Batwoman's arm? It, it looks like some other person who is going to play Batwoman, I believe, who's never been Batwoman. Um, who's it's not a Batwoman from the comics. It's not a. You know, because there were there were there was other people who held the title of Batwoman. So yeah. that shit, crazy woman. They, they could have gone another route. Um, it's unfortunate. I think Ruby Rose put the CW in a tough position. Um, walking out, I also look at the CW and I'm like, man, how the hell did you have that contract where she just could walk out after yeah. one season like that? Yeah. So the last one we're going to talk about on the three down portion is something that needs to be discussed. I'm sure we're going to get. A lot of comments on this, but it's one thing is a lot of these are trends. I see it as a trend, but it's also somewhat of our opinion. And there's just what's down right now is there's a lot of crybabies in the comic book hobby. Yeah, and we say it's down, but the truth is it's up. I mean, I'm seeing an increase in comic book crybabies. We're down on it. So to be very clear on that, yeah, three up, three down is also our personal opinions on where these trends are. The point of three up, three down is we're not telling you what's happening right now. We're telling you what the trend is heading towards. That's what the goal of, especially this down category is to try to allow you to get ahead of what's going on in the market. So yeah, yes, this is our opinion. And uh, the beauty of Simpleman's Comics is it's our platform to share our opinions. And one thing that we have seen over the last several weeks um, that has always been persistent in, in any hobby, but has is, is been really prevalent in comics, it's just the, the cry baby attitude. Um, a little bit of entitlement, um, you know, uh, a little bit of what about me attitude. Um, we've seen it with store exclusives. Um, I, again, I want to send a shout out to our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics, who had it, just a real blowout with their last Ronin book. But the last Ronin book's a prime example. Um, you know, the minimum print run is 450. Frankie's creates 1,000. So they go out of their way. No other store is doing that. 
You're not going to find any other store. Go look at the print runs of every last Ronin book you're going to find. You're going to see them at 450, or maybe 500. But he went and did 1,000. He tried to account for what he believed the demand for this book would be. And then he did a rare uh, canvas virgin cover that was out of 250. He put them available as he does all of his books, available early for the Facebook group. That has been advertised on this channel and everywhere else um, that he advertises. And the book sold out instant. It was an instant sellout. It was like a sneaker or, um, you know, when some of these rare Comic-Con variants become available, you know, immediate sellout. And people started crying who didn't get their book. And that's not an isolated incident, Brian. We're seeing that type of mentality consistently. Yeah. Some people think there should be enough print run for anyone that wants one. Right. And all that does is cause a print on demand system that allows no book to be valuable. The reason you want that book, as much as you want to say that you love the art, I don't believe there's that many people who are so emotionally attached to Peach Momoko art. The reality is they want it because of the value attached to it. So you want it because of what it's worth, but it's only worth what it's worth because you want it and you're struggling to get it. That's what makes books valuable. That's supply and demand. We talked about supply and demand, people's not understanding of supply and demand. Um, I said, I saw somebody talk about ultimate fallout today in a Facebook group where somebody was talking junk about the print run. They said, I'd rather have a book that's printed 73,000 that half a million people want than a book that's printed to 500 that only 300 people want. And that's, what we were talking about last week and people wanted so much. And I got to give Kevin from Frankie's a shout out because again, because he felt bad. We're saying our attitude was people are just crying about this. So what he did was he printed up another version of the variant featuring the trade dress. He put that up for sale and even that sold out. And he didn't have to do that. He did that as trying to appease these people who, who felt like they had been left out. Um, and I just think that we're getting to a point with it, within this hobby where we all have to look at whether it's exclusive variants. And this isn't about exclusive variants or Frankie's even. Um, just in, in general, we see a, a, lot of, a lot of this goes on whether or not it's um, within like the content creation community. We see people who are like, I created this or I did this first and you do this and you're doing this. And we've talked about some of the blocking and just the attitudes that people tend to have where if things aren't going exactly their way, they want to vent and they want to cry and they want to complain. And social media is a great tool for that. But that negativity is not helping the comics industry, nor is it helping yourself. Information is key, right? It's, it's the key to everything we do. The, instead of sitting there looking at themselves in the mirror and saying, man, I, I missed out on this. Um, I need to be more prepared in the future. I need to join the Facebook group. I need to know what the code is. Um, I need to make sure I'm getting my free shipping that you also get from the Facebook group. You know, things like that. Instead of taking that attitude, we started getting hit with DMs um, and, and complaints and stuff like that. And it's, it's really disheartening to see people you like. Um, and that is, I even had friends hit me up um, just crying. And I told them, just like I'm sitting on the mic, I had one of my very good friends hit me up. And I told them, I said, you're being a crack. I said, you, you just didn't get something you wanted. And now you feel like somebody else is doing something fair. And I just think that as, as a community, we've got, to, we've got to be better at that. We've also got to stop, you know, making our own judgments on what other people do. So like I've seen that we got some of this this week and I know other YouTubers have gotten it, but like sponsorship deals, sponsorship deals are how we support the channel. It's how we, we, we are able to do the things that we're do. That was how we're able to build some of the projects. That we're, it's how I paid for the camera that I'm looking in right now. Is through sponsorships, through through Patreon, through these tools. I know people don't may say like, oh, we get that comment. It looks like an advertisement. It's like, come on, man. Like we go out of our way. I don't feel like our content looks like an advertisement. Um, I think there's other YouTubers who get that flack who I don't think their advertisement, their their content looks like an advertisement. Um, I think it's difficult because you, you know, who is somebody else? to talk about how another person is making their money. I would never do that to somebody else, but that's the kind of entitlement and the kind of crybaby attitude we're seeing in, in the comics market. That's just unfortunate. So, um, I, you know, if you take part in that, I, I would hope that people look in the mirror and, and start kind of realizing. Yeah. And I think everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I mean, if you, if that's how you feel, that's how you feel, but we're also entitled to our opinion. And I think 
we do everything we can to provide the content, the information, and the value from the channel. Yeah. And then take down those sponsors to help grow the channel, promote the channel. And the sponsors, we've said before, we just don't take on sponsors to have sponsors. It's people that we feel align with the same vision that we have for this channel. We love Frankie's comics. We love them before that. So if you say there's a bias for it, I guess you could say, yeah, you're right. There is a bias for it. But we're also promoting it because that's how sponsorship works. Yeah, and I can, I can sleep at night seeing the success that they're having and the, and the impact they're having on the secondary market. So I'm, I'm, not selling, I'm not selling you or advertising you a product that we don't believe in. And that, that's where that integrity and community come in. We're providing information to our community and we're doing it with the utmost integrity. Um, but yeah, we're not going to apologize for making sponsorship deals or, or, or business deals or getting involved in different things because, you know, that's how we're able to bring you guys five pieces of original content a week, which I, I don't see a lot of YouTube shows doing and, and the, the, the production quality that is being put into that, you know, to be compensated for that time. And we're not putting it behind a paywall, which is an option that a lot of content creators do. But there's the three up, three down for this week, guys. We're going to put comments on the screen right now from last week's episode. So make sure you comment on this week's. Again, let us know what did you think of the list. What do you think's up, right down? What do you think's down? And with that being said, this is Brian and Jack from Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.